Well, hey friends, um, we are back with one of our midweek uh, ministry videos. And today I'm speaking with Devon Loggins, who is the president CEO of Methodist Children's Home. So Devon, you wanna say hello? Hello, hello Parkway, how are you doing? Good to see you. Devon, I know I shared a little bit with you of um, the reason we're doing these. So we're going through this series of the I Am Statements of Jesus. And one of the main hopes is that we're reminding people that I know there's a lot of heaviness in the world right now, but um, if you just look around, there are a lot of faithful people really trying to, um, to, to just share love and do God's work in the world. And so we wanted to highlight those and show people that we still are community together and there's still ways to be community. So I'm going to let you just share a little bit about Methodist, Methodist Children's Home. So tell us, what is Methodist Children's Home? Well, Don, first let me say thank you for having me because uh, it is so special that you thought of Methodist Children's Homes to highlight this week. So thank you for that. That's so important to us. We thank the Lord for you. We thank the Lord for Parkway that has been in our lives and in our corner for so many, so many years. So thanks everyone, all of you for that. Um, the Methodist Children's Homes, man, we've been around since 1896. We were Methodist, we're at the forefront of um, taking care of widows and orphans. You know, child welfare laws didn't, weren't uh, established till probably about 1875. So almost 20 years later, uh, officially, the Methodist Children's Homes of Jackson uh, or of Mississippi, sorry, um, uh, stepped in to that gap to take care of children and, and families. And so we've been doing that ever since. Uh, to fast forward uh, from our organization being in Water Valley to being here at 805 North Flag Chapel Road on this beautiful 186 acre campus. Uh, it was purchased in 2010 from the Baptist Children's Village, uh, where what it was before. But what we do here at Methodist Children's Homes, we have four primary uh, programs. First and foremost is our therapeutic group homes, where we take care of kids, like I said, on this gorgeous 186 acre campus in a therapeutic group home setting. These are kids that have been removed from their homes due to abuse, neglect, all forms of abuse and neglect. Uh, from their parents um, and they live with us until they either can return home to their families, be placed in a foster home in the community, or in many instances this year we've had eight adoptions and oh. so that has been a blessing. Um, so these are kids that had nowhere to go and then um, the Lord put a family in their lives through our second program which is our foster uh, care program where we identify, recruit, and train families in the community to take care of kids in foster care. And so eight of those fam I mean, eight of those children in that program have been officially adopted by those foster parents. So that is a blessing. Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. The third program that we operate is our community mental health center, where we provide mental health services for, for children and families in the community at large. They don't have to be in foster care. They could be my nephew, my niece, who are just struggling with uh, teenager issues and things of that nature. And so our team goes into the home, into the schools, works with the families to uh, ensure that their children have everything that they need. And the fourth program, which I'm very excited about because we just um, received an initial certification from the Department of Mental Health and they just did another walkthrough. So we should re be receiving a full certification for our permanency assessment center. And so that will, we're having a, um, a ribbon cutting sometime uh, within the next month to open that program. But when the kids that we serve come to Methodist Children's Homes, on average, they are on their 15th placement. Mm -hmm. And so if you look at that number 15, we have kids, as an average, we have kids that have 30, 40, 50, 60 placements. And so by the time they come to Methodist Children's Homes, sometimes they don't even unpack their bags for the first month because they're used to leaving and starting over somewhere else. 
the average length of stay for us, uh, for kids here is uh, eight to nine months, and the average age is 15. So if you look at average age, 15, average number of placements, 15, some of these kids have moved every year of their life which puts them two to three years behind their same age peers in the school setting. So we have a very short window to do some very deep, impactful work. And that's where your guys' support and everything has been so tremendous. So those are our four programs and, and that's what we do here at, M at MCH. Yeah, thank you, Devon. Man, I've, I've heard, I mean, you and I have talked before and so I've, I've heard some of this before, but every time it's just, um, I think it's, it's stuff you can't um, wrap your brain around. So I'm thankful that this is here to, to aid <clears throat> to aid with those children. So Definitely. the reason we thought, I've shared this with you as well, of Methodist Children's Home for this one is because this past Sunday, we preached on the I am statement, I am the resurrection and the life. And as you said, you know, when you get 15 year olds who have moved 15 times and you have this very short window um, part of what we believe, you know, is, is that our God can do the impossible and can bring new life into dead spaces. So I'd love to hear um, some of your stories or one story that you, you look at and you think, man, there's, this is the work happening at Methodist Children's Home. And this is what we are able to do uh, with, the, with the support of so many. Um, this is going on my 15th year of working with children and, and child welfare and in foster care in particular. So I have stories that go from um, one end of the spectrum to the other end of the spectrum. We could be here all some day. success, Yes, some <laughs> success stories and some not so successful stories. But that's life for us because we realized that, you know, you're talking to a guy that also, you know, worked about 12 years in, in super maximum security prisons across the country. And one of the things that I found out when I was working in there before I'd go into a situation, I have to read the background. If I had time of the inmates that I was about to go uh, speak to. And what I started noticing is that their backgrounds are identical to the children that we serve now. Mm. And so when you look at kids in foster care, when you look at children who have experienced childhood abuse, and if those things are not tackled and taken care of during that childhood, then we, they grow up with us, if you will. Yeah. And so, um, so the stories can be a myriad of things and people have their own definitions of what success is. But we have had kids, for example, Christopher had 36 placements when he came here. He was in the 11th grade, um, he wanted to go to the military. He just didn't know how he was going to do that at all. He, his mother, um, he was adopted at age two. He's never met his biological mother. Uh, and again, those placements started and resulted in a culmination of 36 of those. By the time he reached us, like I said, he still had a great spirit of hope. He had uh, a lot of an ambition and initiative. And so um, we were able to get him into, uh, well, he was able, he did all of the work. So we were able to walk alongside him and enjoy it with him. But he joined the United States Army um, and he set out for boot camp uh, in Fort uh, Benning, Georgia. He wanted to be an infantry soldier. About 15 of us carpooled down town to the uh, MEP station where they um, get all squared away and, and, and get on the plane and fly out from Jackson. Uh, There's about 15 staff people there uh, who are his family. Um, myself and one of our maintenance men who had a very close relationship with Christopher, we drove to Fort Benning, Georgia for his graduation. When we got there, Don, we sat around the table um, you know, we met at the uh, commissary afterwards and we had some Burger King as a celebration, but he was just so sad. And uh, Nathan and I were trying to, you know, just celebrate with him. And he just was so just down and out. And finally I was like, dude, what's wrong, man? We drove almost 10 hours to see you. And he said, you know, 
when we get this thing called military leave, Mr. Devon, and all the soldiers, all, all the other soldiers, they're going home to their families or whatsoever. He says, I don't have anywhere to go. Mm -hmm. And it didn't click to me because I'm like, what are you talking about? He's like, yeah, I don't, I don't have anywhere to go. I, don't. I said, dude, you come home. And his eyes got bright because he never thought about, hey, I could come home to Methodist Children's Home. Since that time, this is going on his second year as a soldier, United States military. He's doing great, by the way. Talks to me all the time, whatsoever. I flew him home the first time like you do your child. So he came on military leave. We flew him home. I picked him up from the airport. He stayed with dad. He stayed with my wife, mom. He was able to visit all of his aunts and uncles on campus. Um, went home. Then all of a sudden, I'm sitting in my office several months later. This was um, at the beginning of this year, at February. I was sitting in my office here, and he just walked in the door. And I'm like, hey, what are you here? He says, I bought my first car, and I had to drive it here for you guys to see it. I got my driver's license, because he joined the military, didn't even have a driver's license. So those are just... That's an example of our motto is children first, family always. And so the family always piece is when they don't have anywhere else to go, if they don't have anybody, we are blessed to be considered their families and it's an honor. And then we have kids that, and he's doing great. Then I have kids that I didn't think was doing so great, like Nakia. And she was discharged from here in a negative fashion. Mm -hmm. But we had such good relationships that she now has a husband, kids that call me, and especially now that we're doing Zoom, kids that, that I'm looking at the uh, little babies on, on uh, Zoom, and it's just, it's, it's one end of the spectrum, no different from your kids yeah. or my kids, my own biological kids. We're praying for them, and we hope that whatever we have planted in their lives especially the spiritual piece, what we believe, and you know, Pastor Mike, he's uh, Mike mm -hmm. Williams, That's he's you. our campus life minister. What he and I want to always do is make sure that that is infused throughout our culture. So no matter what happens while the kids are here right now, if they leave knowing Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. then we can be confident that he's gonna finish the work that he started in their lives. Thank you, yeah. <sighs> Just the difference that you said, knowing you have a home and a place to belong, um, and then that relationship with Jesus that says you have someone who loves you for you, that, that is a yes. game changer for people. So good work yes. that you're doing. Well, one last thing I'll ask you to share. If someone wants to find out more about Methodist Children's Home or wants to get involved, is there a website they can visit or how do they go about doing that? So a couple ways. So uh, our website, uh, www.mchms.org. Uh, my cell phone number, 601-760-2285. I'm going to keep it very simple. So website and my cell phone number, put me to work and I'll make sure I connect everyone with who they need to be connected with. Wonderful. Um, well, thank you again. And just I appreciate you taking the time out. I know your days are busy to just share a little bit about this ministry and what they do and so that we can get that out and share to more people. So thank you. Thank you for your work. Don, thank you so much because the best thing that can be done for Methodist Children's Homes by the congregation, by all your parishioners, by yourself is prayers. And that's, and that's what we need, especially during this time. COVID um, really changed the game for us. We had to pivot uh, on a dime, but my staff and my team have been amazing. We've had uh, three staff members that were positive, but they are all healthy okay. back in the game. We had one child that came positive with zero symptoms, and they are now negative and doing well. So the Lord's really uh, blessing the kids and the staff here, and we just need continued prayers so that, that we can continue to have uh, no problems. Yeah, continue praise for to stay healthy and to stay safe. Um, yes. And yes. Yeah. Yes. All yes. right. Well, thank you. Thank you, Don, so much.